Unreal Engine 5 is evolving once again with its fifth public iteration, version 5.4. Alongside some new technology setting the ground for the future of the engine, Epic Games is promising that version 5.4 has substantial performance improvements versus older versions of the engine. So what is better and by how much? I will answer that and more in the course of this video. So what are those performance issues that Epic is looking to address here with 5.4? The core problem Epic is trying to address here was visible immediately three years ago in 2021 with our first contact with Unreal Engine 5.0 on consoles like the PlayStation 5. With that original Matrix Awakens demo, we loved the graphical presentation. Seriously, it is probably the best looking thing running on consoles nearly three years later, but the performance left a lot to be desired. It is just a demo, but it showcased issues in UE5, and you can notice that just by driving around the city in the demo. As soon as you start to gain any speed, more level streaming occurs, and the PS5 is dropping performance intensely in that 5.0 version of Unreal Engine. Far below 30 FPS and with big frame time spikes on the frame time graph. If you get into a crash, then this leads to a Nintendo 64-like performance in the teens. Definitely not good performance. Given how this Matrix Awakens demo heavily uses dynamic resolution, we thought at the time that this performance dipping we were seeing was probably CPU related. We could confirm that speculation when we got our hands on the city sample demo running on PC in 2022. With very simple utilization metrics, it was plain as day to see that the Matrix Awakens demo was very, very CPU limited. If you just drive around that demo on PC, even on a big 2024 CPU like the Ryzen 7 7800 X3D, you will see GPU utilization being very low, frame rates will go down and frame time spikes go up, just like we saw on PlayStation 5. Unreal Engine 5, when using all of its most modern features like MetaHuman, open world streaming, hardware ray tracing, Nanai, and more, is just overburdening CPUs and it's overburdening them in a specifically bad way. It is pushing a single thread very hard. This means Unreal Engine 5 is not utilizing wider multi-core CPUs that exist in a good enough way. This is a big issue, of course, because UE5 is going to be very prevalent this generation, and because consoles and current CPUs on PC have many cores. This is where Unreal Engine 5.4 comes in, hoping to fix this issue to a good degree. There are a good couple changes in the change log here for UE 5.4, but the biggest and most important one for this video is render parallelization. Essentially, splitting up the render thread to better utilize multi-core CPUs. So how much better does UE 5.4 run than 5.0? Let's look at this run through the city here as a benchmark. 5.0 on the left and 5.4 on the right. We can see in a CPU limited scenario here that UE 5.4 of the city sample has a 42% higher average frame rate. This is running on a Ryzen 7 7800X3D. That means in the debut version of the engine, one of the best CPUs on the market had no chance of a good 60 FPS. It was often in the 50s even just doing low intensity movement like we see here. In 5.4 on the other hand, that same CPU is now driving the FPS into the 80s while CPU limited. This is a huge improvement to overall performance on the CPU. And this is the exact same content and settings, now just running a lot faster due to better multi-threading. This is great news for PC as I'm showing, but it's also great news for consoles. We cannot directly test consoles, of course, like we can on PC, but we do have our Frankenstein PC to see how console hardware fares. This is a PC equipped with an RX 6700 and a 4800S motherboard. The GPU is very close in specs to the PS5, while that 4800S CPU is in fact the CPU from the Xbox Series X. So it's a mishmash that will give us a good ballpark raw performance that you might find on a current gen console. Well, in theory, in reality, this Frankenstein PC in this Matrix City sample demo seems to be below console performance. Running the UE 5.0 demo here with Epic settings, it is struggling fierce. 
Epic settings are indeed above what a console would be using, but that does not explain the difference. Just walking along here in version 5.0 while using the Frankenstein PC shows incredibly poor performance. Frame rates in the teens and a frame time graph that looks like postmodern art. Definitely not console level performance here. Still, even with that being the case, we can test this ultra low end performance and see the difference between the versions of the engine. And guess what? It is way better in version 5.4. Running through the streets, we'll see a 60% performance improvement in average FPS. So that is a good chunk better than even what I measured on the 7800X3D. And if you notice, the frame times are a good deal better too in the bottom right. Here in part because in version 5.4, we are now running into a GPU limit as the CPU is not limiting performance so much. And while flying through the city, the difference improves to a near 80% performance win for version 5.4. So while this test will not be particularly representative of console performance in the end, it does mean good things for consoles as it shows that Unreal Engine 5.4 disproportionately helps lower end systems more than higher end ones. It can take them from being unplayable to being comparatively smooth. So for average performance, UE 5.4 is showing big gains on the CPU. But as I see it, Unreal Engine still has some ways to go to improve performance. As I have said many, many times in Digital Foundry videos, Unreal Engine has a big shader compilation stutter issue. There are a lot of reasons for this that I've talked about in the past, but you can just see what it looks like in the Matrix City sample in version 5.0 running for the first time on PC. As it starts, you can see how there are massive frame time spikes into the hundreds of milliseconds. The game is running horribly, and this is what the first run of a game is like in Unreal Engine if it doesn't use any shader pre-compilation. I would consider it unplayable. Developers can improve this by adding in a pre-compilation step manually, but it is labor intensive and it may not cover all shader variants if the developer is not thorough. And unfortunately we have found out that developers tend to not be very thorough with this. Due to this, since version 5.1 and onward, Epic has been moving to integrating an automated shader pre-caching system that compiles shaders on demand on background CPU threads. As of version 5.4, this is what that system looks like when set to skip objects that lack shaders that are ready. As you can see, the 5.4 version handles shader compilation automatically in a way that makes it smoother overall than version 5.0. But still, I would say that which we are seeing on screen right now is not the desirable end result we should want as users. Check this out. Here is the demo running on the right with a fully prepped shader cache versus on the left using that automated system. Take a look at the frame time graph and look how much smoother and better running that footage is on the right with the fully prepped shader cache. This automated system works, but it still definitely does not ensure smooth performance on modern CPUs for the first run of a game. As a result of this, I think developers should still use a manual shader pre-caching sequence in addition to this automated system to ensure the best performance for a game's first playthrough. I say that even though it may not be enough in the end to ensure smooth performance in Unreal Engine games. Take the example of Fortnite. Now this is the game that Epic uses to show off Unreal Engine in its latest form. It has the greatest amount of support you could imagine for an Unreal Engine game. It has Unreal Engine engineers directly working on it. It uses the asynchronous caching system I mentioned earlier as well as a pre-cache step in the menu. So you would imagine that it does not have issues. Even with all that and all the vast resources of Epic Games and the latest version of Unreal Engine 5.4 in Fortnite, it still is pretty stuttery on PC. Playing the game for the first time on a beefy PC with an RTX 4090 and a Ryzen 7 7800X3D just at 1080p to purposefully make the GPU unburdened, it will not lock to a perfect 60 FPS in spite of the extreme hardware thrown at it. Here is the game running during the first match, for example. 
going down to the game world from the bus is extremely stuttery on the 7800X3D. Definitely not a great first time play experience. And this kind of behavior happens all throughout the first match while moving around the game world and seeing new things. In fact, it took me till about my eighth match or so to stop seeing large frame time spikes when going to new areas of the game world. So roughly an hour into normal play. To say the least, even with UE 5.4 and even with the full backing of Epic's technological might, Fortnite still has a poor first time player experience on PC in regards to smoothness and performance. So Epic is not setting a great example for their engine with their own premier game. Beyond shader compilation being unsatisfactory even in UE 5.4, I would still say Unreal has some other issues with smoothness here still. Let's go back to that Matrix City sample again. With the comparison I showed earlier, we can see that although average FPS is a lot higher in version 5.4 of this demo, the frame times are not much better. Check out the bottom right here of the frame time graph. Take notice how there are lots of spikes up into and around and above 33.3 milliseconds every few seconds or so. These are very visible spikes in frame time that you will see on the best VRR monitor out there. So the visuals while moving through this city sample demo are constantly hitching. So UE 5.4 still seems to have issues with healthy frame times on PC much like it did in the base 5.0 version. In fact, running through the game world really fast shows off the issue very well. Take a look here how we can see a similar higher average FPS in 5.4, but the frame time graph is an up and down seesaw. It looks pretty bad. And honestly, 5.4 here, due to the variation between frame times, looks subjectively worse than 5.0. This issue of moving through the game world and causing frame time spikes is what I call traversal stutter, and it's endemic to many Unreal Engine games, including the city sample. Unreal Engine 5.4 definitely helps average frame rate out, but it doesn't seem to greatly help the causes of traversal stutter based on my experience here. Okay, so performance is better in 5.4 on average, while smoothness is not necessarily better. But what about other things like visuals? Since version 5.0, Epic has been making some interesting strides to improve the visuals of Unreal Engine further than it already has gone. And there's some clear successes here. A good example can be found in glass rendering. In version 5.0 and the settings that are used for console games, glass does not render with ray traced reflections of the surrounding area. Instead, it uses probes of a sort, and that is mixed with screen space reflections. In versions beyond 5.0, you can use the higher PC spec setting, and now glass gets ray traced reflections and looks a lot better as a result. This feature is not necessarily enabled by default in the engine though, so let us hope that developers for PC versions of UE5 games look to include this as an option on PC so PC users can get a forward looking experience. Another PC facing feature that Epic has been constantly updating since 5.0 is the hit lighting feature. Basically, this makes the lighting and reflections look much more realistic. Without hit lighting, as we see on the left here, dynamic objects like character models have no color values in them in reflections, and they will look quite a bit better with hit lighting as they'll have actually shading on them. We can also see things like textures and materials on objects like the street or the sidewalk here on the ground are much more detailed and realistic in reflections with hit lighting on in the scene here. And as we can see in this shot here, hit lighting adds in ray traced shadows into reflections, so you can see those detailed shadows and reflections that are otherwise not there without this setting enabled. This feature works quite well in version 5.4 and has around a 13% performance cost in this scene here on an RTX 4090 while forcing the game to run at a native 4K. I'd say that's a reasonable performance cost for an ultra high end setting. Once again though, let us hope that developers allow this setting to be toggled in UE5 games on PC for future scaling. Another interesting upgrade is in emissive lighting. You can see this here. This lighting fixture here is not marked up as a light at all in the traditional sense using rasterization. Rather, it is a glowing texture that spreads light around the scene near it using lumens ray tracing. This type of emissive lighting is how all the lighting in the city sample is done when you set it to nighttime. 
when set to nighttime, there are no traditionally rendered lights using rasterization, as you might imagine. All of the lighting from artificial lighting here is done emissively with lumen ray tracing. This has been improved in versions past version 5.0. Check out this comparison here. On the left is 5.0 and on the right is 5.4. Emissive lighting has more coverage. In 5.4, we can see more lighting hitting the column and the wall adjacent to this lighting fixture. This is good and much more realistic and it will make it so that games can more easily do emissive lighting. The issue I've seen with this though is for small lights. Check out this shot here of me running under this overpass in 5.0 on the left and 5.4 on the right. I want you to concentrate on the ceiling above, the bottom part of the overpass. Small lights are hanging there, and in 5.0, they barely have any light emitting from them. That's not realistic. In 5.4, there's a good deal of light being emitted from them and adding to the scene, but as you can see, it is very unstable lighting that flickers in and out of existence, and it's kind of distracting. So while 5.4 is better with large emissive lights, as I showed off earlier, it can cause issues with smaller emissive lights that will be less stable. In fact, lighting in 5.4 looks a little less stable in general in my subjective opinion when comparing these two versions. Check out the reflections on the ground here in 5.0 versus 5.4 while running. These are the same settings being run. Notice how there's more sparkle and aliasing in the reflections in 5.4 versus the older version of the engine. It's a little odd and I'm not exactly sure what could be causing it, but I did notice it when comparing this demo here for this video. Looking beyond 5.4 to the future, there are a few interesting things to look out for. But for my money, I would say the most interesting thing at the moment is Nanite being extended to work for character models. As of right now, this is experimental, but the footage you're seeing on screen right here was sent to me by Dylan Brown, an Unreal Engine specialist at Model Farm. And what we can see here is Nanite being used for a character model in Unreal Engine. Nanite is allowing for infinite geometric detail no matter how close the camera gets to the character. And in this case, Dylan is using a 3D noise hooked up to the UV V and it is scrolling. This gives the appearance of a boiling and uneven moving surface all across the model and all that little fine detail in that boiled area right there that is done with geometry that is incredibly dense. This is just a little demo of it but imagine the type of detail that you can see here being used for other things like damage systems on characters for horror games or characters that morph and change in real time. There's a lot this could be used for and I'm very curious to see what artists do with it when Epic supports Nanite for characters officially in a future version of the engine. And with that being said, I think we have reached the end of this video covering Unreal Engine 5.4, on PC at least. As Epic said, it does indeed improve CPU performance by a lot. That 40% plus better looking performance while looking essentially the same is awesome. And as we've seen with other things, Unreal Engine is improving visually in other areas with higher quality presets made for PC GPUs. Still, I think the engine could use some work in some specific areas, especially frame time stability. Shader caching still needs some work as I see it, as their own game, Fortnite as a measuring stick, is still kind of failing in this aspect. Seriously, that game stutters something fierce on big CPUs till this day. And hopefully there is something systemically done at the engine level to alleviate traversal stutters. It's still all over that Matrix demo in full force and can be found in essentially every single Unreal Engine game out there. Anyway, that's enough from me for now. If you did like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. Support us on Patreon to help us out and of course write a comment below. Follow on Twitter and as always, this is Alex bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.